We're talking about fatty acids in the treatment of candida. How effective is coconut oil and the coconut oil subfractions like monolaurin and caprylic acid and lauric acid, and also the subfraction of castor oil called undicylinic acid. I treat a ton of fungal overgrowth. Candida wasn't really on my radar for a while. I had the blinders on and I was just looking at bacteria. I was looking at SIBO and bacterial dysbiosis in the large bowel. When I first came to this calling of mine, you know, as a herbalist, I was just obsessed with parasites. That's because I had a couple coming up and, you know, really spurred me on to, uh, you know, work in this field. And I don't really see parasites for the most part as a strong driver of most of my uh, patient symptoms. For me, a good chunk of it is bacteria, I treat a lot of SIBO, and a really, really big chunk of it is fungal. Suspecting candida, but I use a lab to test for fungal overgrowth, the organic acids lab, organic acids test from Great Plains. It doesn't really tell us exactly which fungal overgrowth it is, it just tells us how much of it is fungal, like how severe is this kind of fungal presentation. All these markers, you can go through a case study treating candida and a mold overgrowth in the gut here to unpack the different markers. But today, we're just talking treatments and we're talking fatty acids to treat fungal overgrowth like candida. So in my herbal dispensary, when I'm treating a fungal overgrowth like candida, I'll turn to herbal tinctures and herbal extracts, you know, lots of herbal antifungals, oregano leaf and oregano oil. There's a whole video that I use um, oregano to treat SIBO here. You can learn lots about oregano and its antimicrobial actions. But today we're talking about fatty acids and the two really big ones here that I'll be using, not in every patient, in the right patient that needs it. On the coconut oil side of things, we've got the coconut oil subfractions like monolaurin, that's from lauric acid, um, caprylic acid, we've got a, a whole handful of different subfractions. And on the castor oil side of things, that's um, a fatty acid subfraction called undicylinic acid. A little bit of a mouthful there, but again, a very, very, very potent antifungal um, with different mechanisms of action that we're going to be talking about today. 90% of coconut oil is saturated fatty acid, and of that 90%, 50% of it is lauric acid acid and you can actually get a monolaurin extract you know in like a capsule they can just order you know online speak to your practitioner first this isn't medical advice which is a really potent antifungal i'll put a few links in the description below if that helps and one of my favorite 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 uh, coconut oil extracts is a product called lauricidin so these different subfractions of coconut oil have been shown to do a whole bunch of antifungal goodness for us, anti-candida actions in the gut. Number one, they can reduce hyphal formation. And I picture this little seed sprouting and growing, and it's a lot more technical than that. That's just kind of how my brain works. But if we picture a unicellular candida, it's not a problem. It's not associated with gut damage or symptoms, inflammation. It's when that candida, that unicellular candida, forms this hyphal variety and kind of sprouts almost. That's how it's why I picture the, uh, the seed sprouting. It's associated with gut damage, tissue damage, inflammation, all the symptoms of candida. So if we can block that hyphal formation, we're, we're off to the races there. They've also been shown to reduce adhesion and inhibit biofilm formation. Biofilms are one of the main reasons why antifungals and antibiotics don't work. They actually can't get to the bug to treat it. And probably the most exciting piece, this is where I get all jazzed up. We've got good evidence showing that they can disrupt 
cellular membrane on that fungal cell wall. So again, if you picture a fungal overgrowth, you know, taking over the digestive tract and you're disrupting that cell membrane, that fungal overgrowth isn't gonna thrive. At the same time, I would definitely be bringing in antifungal herbs and you can learn about my favorite herbal antifungal here. So if we're moving on to another source of fatty acids to treat candida overgrowth in the digestive tract, I would be turning towards towards undisalinic acid. We've mentioned it a few times before, and that's a subfraction of castor oil. And you can get a few products. Thorn does this really, really fantastic undisalinic acid. You have to take quite high doses. And you know, for a sensitive patient, it's not the most tolerated piece. And that's a really big piece. I mean, I'm gonna be putting together a video soon on die off and how to manage die off and you know, some clinical pearls there. But I do find that when you are dealing with a significant fungal overgrowth like candida, you know, significant levels, significant symptoms, and you go after the bug actively and aggressively, you know, the wheels can come off and symptoms can flare and you can be dealing with a lot of this die-off um, reaction, a lot of, lot of die-off symptoms. Undisalinic acid, it works in much the same way as the coconut oil subfractions. It can inhibit the formation of the hyphal form of candida, you know, it can inhibit adhesion and biofilm formations. And again, the most exciting piece is it can disrupt those cell membranes of the fungal overgrowth too. What do we do with all that information? You know, all the mechanisms of action and all the science, you know, what's relevant? Boots on the ground, what helps? What do I recommend in the clinic? That's the most important thing. Where do I see results. You know, with fatty acids, I like to keep them in the wings. If someone comes to me and we know they have a fungal overgrowth on lab testing or we strongly suspect it, the core protocol, the core approach would be herbal medicines. I love herbal tinctures because we can custom formulate them to you and they're very, very strong, very, very active medicine. You know, you can work with an encapsulated antimicrobials, for a fungal overgrowth, I actually don't see great results in most of my patients with that approach. Oregano oil, high dose if you need to. Always, always, always working with prebiotic fibers. I love partially hydrolyzed guar gum. It's low FODMAP. It'll help rebalance that digestive tract. Tailored probiotics. Saccharomyces boulardii, spore-based probiotics. I mean, the, the list never ends there. And then if we aren't seeing the results that we need, you know, 50% improvements, 75% improvements within, you know, a month or two at the most, that's when I would be recommending layering in a fatty acid subfraction to treat candida. And where would I start right there? Would I go for the coconut oil subfraction, something like a monolaurin, like lorisidin, or would I go more for the uh, castor oil subfraction, the undisalinic acid? Right at the moment, and I am definitely allowed to change my mind as I see things kind of change in the practice and you know things work better than others, I am definitely firmly in the undisalinic acid camp. There are two products. Number one would be undisalinic acid. That's actually the name of the product by Thorne. And the other one would be Mega Myco Balance by Microbiome Labs. I wouldn't rely on either one of those as a standalone antifungal. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are in Australia or New Zealand, you're looking for support with a candida overgrowth or digestive symptoms, there will be a link in the description below. And reach out, I'd love to hear from you.